So hello folks, welcome back to another edition of the Hospitality Interviews with me, Barry Clark from Dunedin Consultancy. Now today I've got a real treat for you. I'm joined by Bill Christie from CER Business Finance. Um, I don't mind sharing with you, Bill has become absolutely my go-to person uh, to give me advice and also to help and support any of my clients who are looking at funding, financing, acquisition projects, anything to help them with their financial, um, financial concerns with their business. Um, Bill, we've known each other for a wee while now. We've got to know each other through the networking circuit here in and around Glasgow. Some of our audience today won't have had the pleasure of meeting you. So why don't you just give us your, your backstory is absolutely fascinating, Bill. Give us the wee potted history um, of where you've come through the financial world. Well, I joined one of the high street banks, let's just say many, many years ago, because I've been in the profession for over 40 years. So I um, learned a lot, but, but still learning. Um, I'd served seven years in London, I, down in, in Bond Street and, and Knightsbridge, came back up to, to Glasgow. I was charged of the advances section in what was the old Gordon Street office and set up what was at that time the first business development unit that any Scottish bank had. When I recommended that it be a, in reg, regionalised um, I'll put it this way, that's when I decided to leave because it wasn't going to happen for about another five years. So I was headhunted by the then James Finlay Merchant Bank to develop the whole banking group with a whole lot of different companies within that. Unfortunately, a, a chairman came into the, a new chairman came into the PLC and that was the end of my job there. Um, so I formed my own consultancy, which eventually became CER Business Finance. Do I see myself as a banker? No. Do I see myself as a broker? No. That's why I call myself Bill Christie, your business and commercial finance facilitator, because my job is to understand what you and indeed your clients need, not what they want. And with like Barry, I've got so many contacts that I can facilitate by bringing in the appropriate and um, financial or sorry business professionals that I trust to help you as well so I may be a actual sole trader from a more company but on the other hand I also have the benefit of other other people as well and in fact last year towards the end of last year I became an authorized rep representative with the channel finance group um, and just so a you can see for the channel finance group that's that's them there. Mm -hmm. So I uh, so give them a bit of, of exposure as well. But it's important because with them, I, I've got, I can work with them very, very closely because I have access to a whole lot of funders um, that mm -hmm. otherwise I couldn't I couldn't use. <clears throat> I guess, Bill, you know, the it's that access to a whole variety of different funders that really enables you to help the individual client that's coming to you. Um, one of the things I often hear you saying whenever, whenever we're in any kind of networking event together, I often hear you say that the traditional high street banks are not necessarily the, the best place to start on your funding journey. If you're trying to start a new business or expand mm. the business that you currently have, I know you very much encourage people to look at alternative options because in many cases, the high street banks won't be that interested in, in, in starting, especially with new ventures. And um, maybe you could tell us a wee bit more about, about why you, you feel that uh, strongly yes. about that. I think the high street banks all lost a lot of experience. People left the banks or made redundant a number of years ago. And the idea of the of the of the business development manager that went by the by the board. Mm -hmm. And what happened, they brought them, them back in again. And yes, but having having said that, it took me to get out of banking and, and the merchant banking, what I learned in the merchant banking and what I learned with my own business over well over 10 years, it's everything else that you need to know. And um, walking into a high street bank, who are you going to meet? And no disrespect to them, they don't have the experience. Mm -hmm. And yeah. unless you can provide the information, and that's why you see in the sign behind me here, it's the financial tools that you have to understand. I have to ask the questions. It's like being a doctor or a social worker. I ask so many questions. Then you have to gather that and you have to make a professional presentation. 
it's all about, it's all about funding because it could be a startup situation and you've also got to advise clients and as well on how how they incorporate themselves whether it be a sole trader a, a partnership a limited company or llp have they spoken to their accountant have they spoken to their lawyer because if they make a mistake at the beginning that could mm. that could that could well come come back on them yeah yep. so but yeah there are now so many alternative funders online um a not necessarily online but uh, so many who are good so a, the high street banks are up against it and since since covid um a lot of them have been concentrating on the bounce back loans and that and the actual c bills loans and for a while there and it's still maybe the case you couldn't even open up a business account or a personal account mm. And some mm. of them are saying, yeah, let's see what you want to do. Let's get the actual details. On, and then when we're ready, we, we can press the button. Whereas if it's, if it's property related, very few of the high street banks are doing it. Um, development <coughs> finance, bridging. So it's not about one, one financial tool. You may have to use several financial tools to achieve your objectives. Mm. Very sound advice, Bill. Um, you and I, you and I have consulted together on on a couple of well, a couple of projects where we've we've shared opinions and we've we've sought to help um, clients, especially a couple of my clients who've been looking to um, to enter into the hospitality industry. Now, um, traditionally, one of the one of the key main barriers, not just in hospitality, I think in most industries, but especially in hospitality, it's been getting that initial commercial funding in place. Um, has been a huge barrier to many people looking to invest into um, into hospitality, whether that be hotels, cafes, pubs, whatever. Um, and right now, harder than ever, more difficult than ever. Um, I've had certainly some of my contacts in the property world saying to me recently, there's transactions happening. There are, unfortunately, there are some really, really nice assets on the market available to purchase at the moment, but they simply cannot get funding uh, secured for anybody right now and um, even what would have been deemed to be a, a good solid operator maybe 12 or 15 months ago um, what what's your opinion Bill? how do you think that market is going to I mean it's going to have to soften um, as the economy op opens up again but what, what's your predictions as to how that is no, going to happen it, over the next it, ha it has to soften of course it's, it's the end of April before the government is going to allow the hospitality business mm -hmm. to start up operational again yep. yes unfortunately businesses have been forced to close there's some wonderful wonderful properties there but it's not all about security it's about the serviceability and even more important, the experience. The banks are looking for experienced operators. Yeah. Um, so they may have other properties, which they may, they might be unencumbered or very little, little borrowing in it. Do they want to borrow against that? But borrowing isn't just the, the be all and the end all. It's, it's how do you repay it? And it has a business is almost like restarting again. Uh, they've got to do their all the work, and there are so many, many things to consider. I think when we first spoke and about this, this podcast, I gave you a list of about thirty things that, that I've, I've actually looked yeah. at, and it, it wasn't all about hospitality. It's all the things that you have to consider with it. Um, but yes, an experience of operator. Uh, some people are going in for short-term funding. They may say, right, we, we can, we can, we can put so much money into it. Um, we want to do. Bridging, short term, bridging, development finance, they're all one and the same under a, a different guise. So, yes, you can do short term funding whereby all the costs for six months a year are, are then deducted from, uh, from the, the gross loan. But there's no point in putting anybody into that. It would, it would be criminal, on my point, to put somebody into that if they weren't going to come out the other end. I think we all Absolutely. have uh, we all have a, an actual professional um, the responsibility. Mm -hmm. I mean, even when banking was having a hard time, I was told to say, "Yeah, I'm a chartered banker." In fact, I'm a fellow of the Chartered Inter Bank Bankers Institute, so I've always been happy to say that, despite what happens at least six, seven years ago. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you, you are professional. You're professional in what you do. We, we both have the qualifications. Indeed, indeed. Um, <clears throat> Very much agree with what you were just saying there, Bill. And I think um, it will be in the in the coming three four months. I think that 
my, my own prediction, particularly for the hospitality world, I think things are going to continue to get worse before they will get better. And my reason for saying that is that with some of the grant fund, now it's been difficult to access a lot of the grant funding that's, that's been on offer, um, particularly for, for independent hoteliers, restaurant owners and such. Um, they've fallen through a lot of the gaps. With furlough, with the um, commercial rates rebate, in many cases, there's just been enough for people, along with using their cash reserves, to just keep going over the last few months. Um, I have to say, my, my immediate concern, and I guess we'll find out more about this from Rishi Sunak next week with the budget, yeah. my immediate concern is that things like furlough, um, okay, in Scotland, the, rate, the um, commercial rates extension, we know that that's going to be continued for 12 months. My worry is that the, the limited financial support that has been there will be pulled really quite quickly. And that's when we'll see business owners really struggle because the cash reserves they did have is what they've lived off for the last 12 months. That's right. um, so inevitably there will be those kind of short term funding needs for businesses that are ready to reopen, but actually they just don't have the cash in the bank to get reopened. Um, somebody in that kind of scenario, what would, what would be your best advice as to how they should proceed? I think one's got to be cautious because with the bounce back loans and the CBO loans, the bounce back loans in particular are up to £50,000. People misinterpreted it. They thought that, 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 that the bank were, were actually guaranteeing it. Mm -hmm. The bank are not, are not guaranteeing it. If at the end of the day you are unable to repay your bounce back loan, the bank has a legal obligation to, yeah, to go against you or an individual. Um, yeah. a, for that, uh, for that money, if they are then, uh, if they are then unable to um, get repaid, that is a time when they go to the, the government uh, to do it. And currently, the banks are, are getting all set up, and I know they're employing people um, mm -hmm. a, and other other professions to advise and, and guide them. And I've seen situations where, and it's commonly known that. The, 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 the facility of the bounce back loan has been abused beyond belief, yeah. beyond belief. Yeah. Um, sea bills, harder to get, but again, people are getting them. Um, but it all depends on how professionally accurate the application is. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it was, a, it was a much more in-depth application process with the Seagulls, wasn't it, Bill? Yeah, because even now, it's all about experience and uh, it's it's all computer-related, but until a, a, a proper a professional can get in front of it yeah. and, and look yeah. at it, but it's, it's not all that it makes out to be. Yes, the government have spent millions of pounds and a lot of businesses, people who have been self-employed are not getting any benefit at all. When you see people in the, the, the music industry, actors, oh, you name it, just about everything that you that you can think of, mm -hmm. um, who uh, may not have been furloughed. And those that have been furloughed may well come unstuck in a few months' time. So is the governments, are the governments going to start to, to, to um, step in to help? I doubt it, but we have to keep the high streets mm -hmm. going. We have to keep businesses going. Um, we have to have weddings, we have to have holidays, I, I, life, a new life has got to continue, but it's all going to be a question of a structure. And if people like myself, who have got to understand what the, the lending institutions have on offer, mm -hmm. under the terms and, and conditions, and how best to represent your, your, 